Welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. Uh, this week I want to cover how to set up some devices on your sewing machine to help you have a much more accurate quarter inch seam. The first thing that you need, and comes with a lot of your sewing machines, and some machines you can buy it extra, is you'll need a quarter inch foot. They sell uh, quarter inch feet with a little flange on the side. We covered that in our first video about how to set up our sewing area, and I um, also covered quarter inch feet in my top five favorite sewing feet for quilting videos. Check out both of those videos. Uh, so first you need to have a quarter inch foot on your machine. If you are new to quilting, a quarter inch is a standard seam size for most patchwork. Once in a while you'll come across the pattern and they'll say half inch or three eighths, but 99% of your quilting patterns are going to be a quarter inch seam allowance. So I have my little featherweight here set up with my travel table, an acrylic table. The second tool I have on all of my sheen, machines is the Clearly Perfect Angle. I uh, used to use a tool called the Angler. And so if you have one of these in your studio and you just didn't know what it did, it does the same things as this guy. Uh, if you want this one, we do offer all of the, the two tools I'm going to show you on our website at thewhimsicalworkshop.com. Uh, but if you already have an angler too or an angler at home and you haven't used it, you can set it up. It'll do the same thing. So they no longer make them, which is why I switched to this product. Uh, this product comes with excellent directions. It tells you all the different ways to use their product. It tells you how to set it up on your machine. I'm going to show you how I set up on my machine. It's a little bit different than how they do it, uh, but it works for me. And then you need to customize it for your machine. So in this case, I'm using a featherweight and it's in an acrylic table and I don't want to tape this tool to my machine because I don't want to ruin all of my beautiful paint job on the machine. So I have actually moved where uh, the tool tells you to cut out. I've moved it down here. So I will actually be able to tape it to the acrylic table. That being said, 99% of the time, you're just gonna cut it the way they tell you. So let's get started. So the first thing you need is you need to take it out of the package. You will need paper scissors and you will need some packing tape. It is a cling tool. It could just cling to my table and I could peel it off when I wanna go home and then put it back down. But I find using some packing tape and securing it to the table once I get it exactly where I want it and just leaving it on my table is much more efficient and it doesn't shift while I'm sewing. So let me show you how to put the uh, clearly perfect angle on your machine. Uh, I am doing mine for a featherweight, so I actually want to be able to put this on here and tape the two ends to each side of the acrylic table. So if I do it where they say to cut it, I would tape on my tape on my paint, and I don't want to do that. That being said, the same technique works whether you're going to do it for featherweight or for your machine. Uh, you just have to decide how do you want to put this on your machine and customize it to the size of your machine. Uh, some people are going to cut a lot off the bottom because it will hang off. Some will cut it off the top. That's one of the reasons I really like this tool is that you can adjust it to what you need it to be. So the first step is you put it on your, under your machine and you put um, the needle down where they tell you to put it down if you're going to leave it where they want it. In my case, I'm going way down here. And then once you have your needle down, I use my quarter inch foot to make sure I have it in the right spot. Take it out. And at this point, you will take your quarter inch foot off the machine and you'll just, it'll just get in the way otherwise. And you would unthread it and you could take your needle out, whatever you need to get to this area. So the next step is we need to cut away this area so that it'll feed dogs will show. And we want to cut this back part away so that it doesn't, like if you just cut this rectangle out, your pieces are going to get caught there. So we're going to cut it away. I like to cut it away while it's still on the cardboard and not cut off. Uh, I believe the directions say to take it off and, and use a seam ripper. I'm just going to do it this way because I think it's a little easier to cut it. I cut past where my point, my needle point is. And repeat the other side. And now what I'm going to do is, this is just garbage, I'm going to audition it on my machine to make sure 
that my feed dogs are not going to be hitting it. And in this case, because I am going to, there's the needle hole on my throat plate. So that's where it would sit and the feed dogs would be another three eighths of an inch past it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut away that. Get rid of that. Try it again. And I need to cut just a hair more away. You can see where this is really, it's a custom fit to your machine. You don't, you can't mess it up without um, really cutting it apart. Don't wanna make that a challenge for anybody. All right, so now you can see all of my feed dogs are um, open. There's nothing back here for my fabric to get caught in. So we're ready to position and tape this guy down. So the first thing I'll do now is take off the cardboard backing. And that just peels right off like that. And now you can see it's a cling so it can position it and it'll cling to my sewing cabinet, which is really, or sewing table, which is really quite nice because it'll hold itself in place while I position it. Now, you're gonna say, how do I make sure I have a quarter inch seam allowance marked on here? Because this piece here is going to be my quarter inch seam allowance. And the other thing you may be seeing is because this is a feather weight, it's harder to see all my lines. So you can do two things here. You can go ahead and leave it that way, or you could just, for the featherweight, because it's a black machine, you could just leave it on the cardboard. It doesn't hurt it. Either way, it doesn't hurt. So um, in this case, I think I might just leave it on the cardboard for now, just to see how that looks so we can see what we're doing. So there it is. Get rid of my thread out of the way. So you can do two different things at this point to mark your quarter inch. You can take a regular ruler and you crank down the needle until it hits a quarter inch point on the ruler. And then you take the tool and you align this line, this green line, the edge of it right with the ruler. And if it's on the edge of the ruler, the quarter inch uh, line in the ruler should be right on the printed line on the tool. So that is one way to gauge where it needs to go on your machine. The other way is sometimes you will get, you'll see these gadgets that have a hole in it that you can stick your needle in and then the rest of it is a quarter inch guide. I got this as a goodie at a trade show I was at. And there it is. I have my needle in there. This isn't going to slide. I can align the edge of the ruler with the edge of the uh, angler. And you want to make sure that it's all the way that it's the whole line down is even. Now, if you were doing this on a white sewing machine and you didn't have the white paper, you could actually see through the angler to see another hor uh, vertical line on your machine that you could use to make sure that everything is lining up vertically. Um, in this case, I'm sh I know I've done this enough times, I know that's pretty good. The um, other thing is there is a line on the um, angler right here that is a dotted line that's a quarter inch down from where your needle should go. Uh, in this case, again, I've shifted mine down, so I actually drew a line a quarter inch down from where my needle goes. And you wanna line that horizontally, and you can use that mark when you're doing bindings or mitered corners, or if you're doing diamonds where you have to stop a quarter inch from the edge, that's another guide for you. Uh, that is explained in the directions wherever I put them, oh, wherever I put those. So once I know I have this where I want it, I have this on the quarter inch line, the horizontal. I have this lined up the way I want it. Um, I'm going to leave it on the paper. Then I use packing tape. It's clear, 
it sticks well, it doesn't come undone very easily, um, and when I do get it off, I can use an alcohol swab just to clean up the sticky residue. It's a nice uh, adhesive. I've been using that to mark, put these on my machines for 20 years. Again, make sure nothing shifted while you did it. And always make sure your acrylic table is in all the way um, if you're doing it on an acrylic table. And if you're in a cabinet, make sure it's, the cabinet, is, everything is square on the cabinet. I'm just gonna get my threads out of the way here. I didn't unthread this because I want to show you some sewing after I get it lined up, um, but you would probably want to take your threads out. And you can see, I want to make sure that's lined up, and that is. And then we just tape this at the top. Okay, now it's not going anywhere. Uh, if I, over there on my cabinet, you'll see I have it taped on both sides as well. Um, in this case, I'm not going to do that because, again, I don't want to get any on the tape on the, on the uh, paint on my pretty, pretty machine. So then I pull this out, and that is on there. Excuse me. So the next thing I put on my machine are these sewing edges from Q-Tools. It is a purple bumper that I have misplaced. There we go. You get five in the pack. They last a long, long time. I'm gonna show you another way to let, make them last even longer. It is a very, very thin bumper. But what happens when I put this on here is my fabric has something to bump up against and it's less likely to go astray and my quarter inch seams are so much more accurate. If you've taken any of my classes, you'll know I have extras of these in my bag. I usually will put one on your machine if uh, you need it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off. And it, this one, the purple ones are adhesive. There's orange ones that are cling. I like the adhesive one. I'm gonna go ahead and put this gauge back in because I wanna make sure that this isn't gonna slide anywhere and that it's right where I need it to be. And I'm using the edge of the ruler as my guide. There we go. So now that is on there. And we're all ready to go. I just need to put, nope, I noticed I'm a little crooked on the end. All right, I'm gonna put my uh, foot, quarter inch foot back on the machine. So now when I go to sew, I have one, two, three gauges to make sure my quarter inch seam is accurate. And I'm going to take a piece of fabric and test this. And you'll see as I get closer to the bump, you know, as I get closer to here, I'm straightening it out, make sure it's straight. Uh, I will go over to my other machine and walk you through flying these quarter inch seams and have four triangles next. And there is my first piece sewn. And I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to double check my quarter inch seam. And in my case, it is accurate. So if it wasn't accurate, you'd have to undo it, adjust it, and try again to see if it's accurate. Sometimes you have to do it once or two or three times. Um, but the more you do it, the better you get at it, the less you have to repeat. But I would not sew without these three tools. I have them on all of my portable tables, like this one for each of my three machines. I have it in my cabinet. And if I go and I, like I said, if you've had me in a class, you've already heard this whole demo. Uh, if you haven't had a class with me, I hope to see you in a future class. So let's go over and do the other half with the sewing and we'll be go from there. So now that I've shown you how to set up your uh, clearly perfect angle and your quarter inch uh, Q tools and using a quarter inch foot, I'm going to show you about some tips on how to sew a very good quarter inch seam. So the first thing you want to do is take two strips of fabric and you're going to sew them right sides together and you're going to sew them and measure it to see how how is your quarter inch seam. This is the best easiest way to check it. Uh, when you're sewing with a quarter inch foot I always start under the foot put it down and make sure the fabric is butting up against. I have a wing on my quarter inch foot 
I'm having it butt up against that, and then I'm having it butt up against this bumper. Um, what the bumper does is helps you be aligned way before you hit the needle versus if you didn't have the bumper, this could be wherever it wants to be, and you're always trying to course correct at the very end. So this sort of gives you some insurance and some more um, runway to get an actual accurate quarter inch seam. Um, the angler underneath, the clearly perfect angle, is what I use to help me align the purple bumper. And then later I'm going to show you how to use that center line. So here we go. And when I'm sewing a quarter inch seam, um, I'm looking right about here. I'm not worrying about up here, it's already too late, and back here is too early, so right about here is where I'm looking. And you'll notice I put my hand on here and I am smoothing it out as it's getting ready to head to the machine. So now right here, it's hard to see, but um, it's not quite aligned. So that now that I know it's not aligned back here, I'll adjust it back here and then keep going. So that is how to use the three tools together to do a quarter inch seam. And then once we pull this through, there's the quarter inch seam, and if you have a purple thing, it has a quarter inch guide on the end, so you can see there that my quarter inch seam is right on. Um, if it was a little too wide or too narrow, I could adjust this bumper to see if that was affecting it. Um, but again, I'll sh that was all in the other, other part of the video where I was showing you how to assemble it. So that's that. Now to use this, for flying geese. I've already gone ahead. This is a two inch square and a three and a half inch rectangle. I went ahead and marked my quarter inch line. Uh, there is a video on YouTube showing you how I mark my squares for flying geese because I do it a little bit differently. But basically, instead of using a ruler from point to point, I use a ruler that has a quarter inch seam built in. And I lay it on here so I can align all three sides and then draw my line. So now that I have that marked, I know I'm sewing from point to point. I align up the point on my center line, which is right here, and I get it up underneath the foot. And in my case, the way I mark them, my quarter inch guide goes on the drawn line. And I make sure that this is aligning to the uh, 45 degree lines on the clearly perfect angle. And then I always start slow just to make sure it's not going to chew up my fabric. I'm watching the point on the center line. This is where my eye is because again, by the time I get up there, it's too late. So I'm looking here and I'm making sure that my quarter inch guide is staying on the quarter inch foot. And you just go all the way to the end. And then you can trim away the square. I've already done one here and you can press and flip that open. Then you're ready to do your other side. Align your square on your rectangle. And if you do mark it this way, always remember the smaller triangle points to the corner in which you want it to flip out to. So I put this out here. I'm gonna sew from point to point and this will flip out. If you do the smaller triangle pointing in and you sew, it's gonna come out like that, so. That's just a tip if you mark it. Again, check out that other video on our YouTube channel. It's a, how to, a better way to mark flying geese squares. So again, I get my point, and that's the other thing. This needle does not have to be right on this point. It can be up to an eighth of an inch in from the point. So if you have a problem where it's constantly eating your squares, just go a little past the needle point and start right about there that's going to save you a lot of frustration. And there we go. So now that it's sewn, it flips out, and it flips out perfect every time. That's why I like to mark it this way. So again, check that video out. I do my half square triangles a quarter inch away from my center line. I use one of these uh, folded quarter clipper rulers. I have a couple different rulers I like to use for this. And I align, I'm aligning this line 
this part of the ruler, this part of the ruler, and this line, and then I draw my line. And then on the other side, I repeat and draw the line. So instead of drawing from center to center, I'm actually drawing my sewing line for half square triangles. So once you go to do your half square triangle, you align the point under your quarter inch guide, your other point down here, you're aligning this uh, Angle, this edge of your square with the 45 degree lines and this drawn line is getting lined up with your center line. And then you go ahead. And I'm looking at these two points to make sure they stay in line. Then I'm going to flip it over. our two seams done and that's how you use your your center line your bumper your 45 degree lines and there's my half square triangles sewn and they're ready to be cut and there we go perfect little half square triangles so that is why I set up the Q tools sewing edge the clearly perfect angle and the quarter inch foot. And between the three of them, I can always sew an accurate quarter inch seam. Uh, especially if you go like me and I sew really, really fast, it helps me stay on track. So I hope these three tools help you out. All three tools are available from the whims well, quarter inch foot is not, but the Clearly Perfect Angle and the bumper are both available from the whimsicalworkshop.com. So now that you've seen the other part, I hope you've enjoyed my crash course on how to perfect your quarter inch seam and the tools that I like to use to get there. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. And if you're on any of our other social media channels, just leave us a comment and say hello. Happy quilting.